Uh, so, Senator, you co-wrote an op-ed in the Daily Beast this month uh, titled, The Left Needs a Spiritual Renaissance, So Does America. Tell us about that argument. Yeah, so we're talking today about the nuts and bolts of governance, right? We're talking about whether America is paying its bills, what the Medicaid program looks like, how much money schools are getting under COVID relief dollars. I, I actually, you know, make the case in that op-ed that we need to take a couple big steps back um, and have a conversation with the American people about what's making them so unhappy, um, about what it sort of means to be happy, about what government can provide you in order to lead a life that's fulfilling. That is traditionally not a conversation that happens in government because we are, you know, mainly focused on adjusting the dials of public policy. Um, I've just come to the conclusion that in my state and around the country, people are really anxious. They're really lonely, very unhappy. That's sending them into some deep, dark, dangerous places. That's in part what leads to January 6th. And the point we make mm. in that op-ed is that somewhere in our political space, we've got to be able to step back and have a conversation with the American people about what they need in order to live a good life, a fulfilled life, um, and, and find some room in our political dialogue for that bigger, broader, more spiritual conversation. I know that that kind of seems like a, a silly, frivolous thing on a day like today where we're just trying to keep the government open and operating. But I think if we don't have that bigger, deeper conversation about meaning with the American people, um, uh, government is going to become more and more irrelevant. So that's the point I'm making in that piece. I wrote it with a a Harvard philosopher um, who's become sort of a, a friend and advisor of mine as I try to think about these bigger questions. Well, actually, we the, the word for today, ephemeral, actually fits <laughs> in very well here because actually it doesn't seem silly. What we're talking about today uh, is ephemeral. When you talk about uh, some of the spiritual challenges that we're facing as a country, uh, it's very easy. You, you can look at I, Tim, Tim Carney, who is a, a very conservative uh, guy, uh, a friend of mine uh, who I don't agree with all the time, wrote, I thought, a, a fascinating book that sort of explained where we are politically. And I don't want to just focus on Donald Trump, but he explained that, that, that we've moved away from faith. We've moved away from uh, uh, sort of the spiritual side of our life. We've got kids now who, instead of, uh, of, of, of going to church, uh, a lot of times they're staring at a smartphone. Yeah. And he talked about churches in rural communities that used to be the bedrock that would pull people together, that would keep people out of their basements, you know, following conspiracies and, and going down dark, dark paths. And they would be in these churches. And you can look and see where these churches in middle America have been hollowed out, where churches on both coasts have been hollowed out. And where they have, the communities have started to fall apart. Uh, and, it, and, and he looks at the data that shows there is a connection uh, to, to this spiritual void that's been replaced again by smartphones, that's been replaced by technology. Uh, and, and there's a hollowness. There's an emptiness. What follows? Well, uh, you've got depression. You've got anxiety, suicidal ideations. You've got a health care, uh, a mental health care crisis uh, that, that at least people like me, uh, I'm not saying everybody's going to believe this just like you, but also people like you believe there is a connection. We, we, you know, it's very interesting. This isn't a conservative thing. I looked up Barack Obama's announcement speech because I thought I remembered him saying when he announced for president in 2000 uh, something in a, 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 about God. And he did. He said, hello, Springfield. Thank you so much, giving all praise and honor to God for bringing us here today. This is the first thing Barack Obama said as a presidential candidate. So this isn't just a Republican or a Democratic thing. This is something I think, Senator, we should all be worried about. Yeah, I, I think that's right. There's a sense today that all you need to do to sort of fulfill your obligations as an American is to play your role in the consumer economy. If you're buying everything you're supposed to be buying, if you're on the right social media sites, then you've checked the box as to what you're supposed to do to be a citizen. And that's not how it used to be, right? I, I mean, it used to be that we had deeper connection to each other and we really worked at those 
those connections. Those connections came through vibrant downtowns, right, where we shopped at the same small mm -hmm. businesses. Those connections came through church and social clubs. And so I just think we have to have that conversation with the American people, and we have to think about policy um, that connects us back to each other. You know, to your point, I was, um, I was out of organized religion for a long time. I've gone back to church. Um, my family is back in church because I think today um, we're just not getting the kind of meaning from sitting on our screens or being on Zooms with each other. We've actually got to get back to in-person connection. And government has to think about ways to encourage people to be back in those in-person conversations with each other. This is absolutely a matter of public policy. And ultimately, uh, I think it's a conversation that isn't about right or left, that this country is really clamoring for right now. Yeah, and, and, and uh, Reverend Al, it's so fascinating. You know, here we're sitting here talking about this. I just remembered going back to uh, a place I lived in in upstate New York uh, uh, when I was younger and was driving around and it, my gosh, it seemed better days. Uh, I went to the church where we went to um, back in the mid to late 70s. Uh, it was boarded up. Uh, went to the church where my mom uh, played organ and uh, conducted the choir, boarded up. Um, again, there are going to be people out there that they always get, you know, a little upset thinking that somebody's preaching to them, I'm not even talking about the spiritual aspect of this, though it is a spiritual aspect of this that does lay a foundation that helps prevent anxiety uh, 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 becoming this this pandemic or or uh, depression uh, but you 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 see the collapse of the church uh, and you see the impact that it has on communities and suddenly what Senator Murphy is saying again a Democrat that many people would consider progressive is a lot like what Tim Carney uh, from the right is saying as well is that Churches, synagogues, uh, mosques, uh, the, the, these, these, these faith centers pull communities together and, again, hopefully keep people out of basements going down on, on, on their, their laptops, going down this hole that, 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 at the end of the day, sends them to very dark places. And, and that is true of those that go down these dark places on the far right or the far left. And I think it's important. I read Senator Murphy's piece when it appeared on the uh, Daily Beast, and the photos they used, I'm sure the senator didn't choose them, but they had Gandhi and Dr. King and others who were spiritual leaders. Dr. King used to say the job of leaders is not to follow public opinion, but to help shape and mold public opinion. And I think that we've failed a lot across the board in that kind of leadership. Uh, and, and I agree with the senator. We need to start talking to each other. One of the things, as you know, Joe, that Martin Luther King III and Andrea King and I are doing for the 60th anniversary of March on Washington is saying we want a diverse march this year in Washington. So we've gone and got the uh, Anti-Defamation League and Latino groups. So it's not just blacks. It's all of us that need to come together and deal with values. And, Senator, I think that those values, that what we believe in, whether it's from an organized church base or not, is also, I think, is relevant to what you're dealing with today with the debt relief, because it is what you believe in and what you think the country uh, should believe in that I think we ought to be dealing with what should be and should not be uh, cut when we deal with uh, the, the debt uh, uh, ceiling on this country. Shouldn't we raise the question on what does America stand for when we're talking about Medicaid or we talk about billionaires maintaining their tax cuts? Yeah, I mean, a big part of spirituality right, is deciding that we have obligations to each other, deciding that when people have fallen on hard times, that we are going to all join together and try to lift them up. That's what the Medicaid program is. That's why President Biden fought so hard to preserve it, because the vast majority of people on Medicaid are only on that program for a short amount of time. And when I talk about having this spiritual conversation, yes, part of that happens 
Christians in church, um, but that can also be an a-religious conversation as well. Maybe one of the things that just makes us happier, gives us more meaning, is having more free time, right? Maybe we should structure an economy in which people don't have to work three jobs in order to pay their bills. Maybe you should just have some time for joy in your life. Go for a hike, watch a baseball game on TV with your kids. And, and that's public policy, right? That's deciding what the minimum wage is. That's deciding if we're going to invest in industrial policy like the Inflation Reduction Act. And so there's uh, certainly a very quick conversation um, connection between uh, a conversation about the good life, about spiritual fulfillment and public policy. Those conversations are connected. But I, I think actually you'd bring this country together if you just stripped away the political argument to begin with and just sat down left and right and said, what do we need to make ourselves happy? We'd actually find out that we have way more agreement than disagreement. And it yes. would frankly make it a lot easier for us to then move to a conversation about public policy. Senator Chris Murphy of Connecticut, thank you so much for coming on this morning. And thank you for writing the piece.